Good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening. Welcome, welcome again to another Wednesday night Bible study. We bring you greetings from Coach Chapter Free Will Baptist Church, where the pastor is um, Dr. Alfonso Searles, and I serve as First Lady Elders Rosemary Searles. We pray that you have had a blessed and awesome day on today. It's been a chilly day, it really has. but still God is good, and he's yes. good all the time. Let us go into a word of prayer. O oh, heavenly righteous Father, who we are again, God, come to you as humble as we know how, to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. God, we just magnify and we praise you right now, God, for being King of Kings, for being Lord of Lord. We thank you again for another opportunity, God. Oh, God, to dissect, God, oh, God, and bless your holy and righteous word on tonight, God. Oh, God, as we go forth on tonight and teach your righteous word, where she don't only let us be a hearer, God, but be a doer into your word, Lord. Oh, God, let clarity flow, God. Oh, God, as your word is being taught. We thank and we praise, we magnify you. Just pray in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. amen. Again, we welcome you to our um, Wednesday night Bible study. And on tonight, we will be talking about the attributes of God. God has a lot of attributes. And uh, preferably after we complete um, this lesson on tonight, that we'll know a lot of his attributes. And know a lot more about them. Amen. amen. Right, so 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 right now the only way we can know about God is through what his word has told us. Mm -hmm. And he's only revealed a part of himself. Because if you read in the scriptures, it says that as we're living in eternal bliss, we will continually gain knowledge from yes. God for all eternity. So we only know just a small portion about God's attributes. God's attributes consist of eternality. Mm -hmm. Goodness, grace, holiness, eminence, immutability, justice, love, mercy, um, omnipotence, omniscience, um, omnipresence, righteousness, self-existence, uh -huh. sovereignty, and he's transcendent. Yes. Those are just some of the things that he has told us about, mm -hmm. brothers and sisters. So God is much more than those things. And can you imagine yes. all of the things that I just named when you start looking at uh, he's eternal. That means mm -hmm. he's been around before time Amen. and he'll be around after time. That means he's always existed. He's self-existent. Mm -hmm. He created everything. Yes. Then when we look at goodness, he is the moral standard mm -hmm. of what goodness is. He created goodness. So he is the epitome of goodness. And as long as we have a good God and we know how what good, the definition of good is, then we know God is yes. on our side and he's going to deliver us out of our situations. And then he's holy. That means he can't mm -hmm. do anything wrong. Nothing. He is completely righteous. He is set apart to be glorified. He is greater than anything, greater than any of his creation. He is set apart. That's what holiness is. And then he's full of grace. He mm -hmm. is always forgiving us yes. when we should have been dead and gone. He could have let us die. Amen. We shouldn't even be living right now. He could have destroyed us. But Can't we tell God, thank he, you. He came that. into his own so that he may graft us mm -hmm. into his glory and his mercy, brothers and sisters. And, and, and like I said, he's merciful. He's righteous mm -hmm. and omnipotent that means he can do anything, anything with a thought nothing is too hard for him he doesn't know what failure is he doesn't know what potential is because it doesn't exist for him amen the god we serve is almighty and awesome mm -hmm. there there's things that we can't even fathom about the goodness of god that's why the uh the super angels are around the throne saying holy, mm -hmm. holy, holy, holy. That's the only way they can describe mm -hmm. him is to set him apart from everything because we cannot describe how great our God, great is. God is. And with all of that power, all of that grace and all that mercy, all that immutability, all that eminence, he is right there at your beck mm -hmm. and call. You can't get away from him. If you go to hell, he's in hell. If you go in the sea, he's in the sea. If you go to outer space, he's in outer space. If you go to heaven, he's in heaven. He is everywhere, but you don't bump into him because he's in the form of a spirit. Amen. You know what I'm saying? He's just awesome. 
So we're going to go ahead and get into some scriptures about who God is. The first thing we're going to look at is his eternality. We're going to read Exodus 3 and 14, correct? Right. And again, we would like to um, say good evening to everyone, to the different ones that's coming on. And we, tonight we'll be talking about the attributes of God. And we're going to be reading several scriptures. So if you want a pen and, and, and paper to jot down these scriptures with so that you can go back at your personal time of studying, that you'll get a better understanding. Again, we'll be doing several scriptures on tonight. The first one will be Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. And it reads, And God said to Moses, I am who I am. Amen. The next scripture, mm -hmm. Psalms, yeah, just, Psalms yeah, 102 and 12. Yeah, but you, O Lord, shall endure mm -hmm. forever in the remembrance of your name to all generations. That was Psalms 102 and 12, Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's it. How many of you, you want to go down to the goodness? Nah, just, just yeah, those are just those three. Yes, sir. Okay, so basically what that's telling us is not only will God exist mm -hmm. undiminished into the future and uh -huh. forever, but God existed before time itself. Yes. God has always existed. He is pre-existing. And what that is basically saying is he didn't need anyone to create him. Mm -hmm. He was already created. Scientists, they have a problem. They can trace everything back to where they call the Big Bang. But when you get to the Big Bang, nothing created the Big Bang and nothing from nothing leaves nothing. Something had to create the Big Bang. Amen. See, God has always been eternal. Something has to be in eternal in order for everything to exist. So there has to be an eternal God. So God has always existed in the past, God exists in the present, and God will always exist in the future. In future. And as God existed, God thought to create everything as he existed. When he created it from the foundations of the universe and anything else that we don't know that he created, we just know of what he's told us that mm -hmm. have haven't been told Brothers and sisters, we must understand that as we existed in God's mind, everything that we see now yes. existed in God's mind. He knew about it before he created it. He knew that, that when he created Adam, he would fall in the garden. He also knew that he would have to be incarnate to come into man and redeem man. He knew he had to come into a fallen, sinful world. And he knew that he would have to sustain us once he saved us. And he knew that he would take us back to heaven mm -hmm. to bring us back into the fold to be his children. So from the beginning of that time, it is a wondrous thing yes. for us as Christians to hold faith, to, to hold faithful to our faith, knowing that God has always existed and he knew these mm -hmm. things that he's going to see us through to the end, that he has saved us. When we should have been guaranteed to die. Yes. But because of his goodness, he came into his own. This is a season of Advent where 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 God has come and we're also expecting God to return. It is a beautiful thing to where God created us and even mm -hmm. before he created us, he knew that he would have to come and die for us. Mm -hmm. And he knew that he would have to suffer yes. and be hum humiliated and come out of glory to die for us, but he loved us anyway, loved brothers anyway. and sisters. And this is why our God mm -hmm. is eternal. Not only is our God eternal, mm -hmm. but he is good as well yes. because of the good things he has done for us. Elder Searles, you want to go ahead and read the scriptures on good? Okay, we just um, completed the, well, the scriptures that we have read was the three scriptures for eternal, the back up, the proof test. So now we're going to read some scriptures to back up why God is of his goodness. Mm -hmm. And we're going to the book of Exodus, chapter 34, verses 6 through 7. Again, this is our backup scriptures for goodness. The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and graceful, long-suffering, and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. Psalm 25 and 8. 
Good, he is a good and upright is the Lord. Um, our last scripture will be James chapter 1, verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Amen. One of the most intrinsic, intrinsic attributes mm -hmm. of God, brothers and sisters, is his goodness. And God isn't good because it's popular for, for him to be good. God is good because God is good. Yes. It's God's nature to be good. God is actually so good that he is the source of what goodness is. Mm -hmm. He's the moral standard of goodness. He set the standard of what good is. He alone is the rule and the measure of what we truly know to be good. To the Christian, the goodness of the Lord is mm -hmm. security. The Christian knows well that he has been bathed in the death and resurrection of Christ and now stands wholly righteous before God. And this being so, he is also recognized as the as that God is good and God has brought good things into his life. Brothers and sisters, we thank God for his goodness. Mm -hmm. Just imagine if he wasn't yes. a good God. I'm just glad that because of his attributes, mm -hmm. he has to be righteous and he has to be pure and holy. And because he's righteous and pure and holy, he's also good. Yes, he because is. if he was bad, we wouldn't exist yes, right now. Yes. As a matter of fact, he wouldn't have never Amen. created us, would he, Elder Amen. Searles? Because in creating us, mm -hmm. he would have had to destroy us if he was bad. Amen. But because God is so good, he manifests himself in us mm -hmm. and he's looking at us through the focal point yes. of Jesus Christ and it makes us good. It's nothing we can ever do that's going to make us good in God's sight. What yes, makes us yes. good in God's sight is he's looking at us through the focal point of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, through the sacrifice that Jesus made. And brothers and sisters, that gives us God's true goodness. And we don't have to abide in evil Amen. because God is looking at us through the goodness of his son. And he's so good, Pastor, that you mm -hmm. know that. Um, he causes all things to work together, you know, for the good, for mm -hmm. those that, that love God. So, Amen. you know, we love God and, and he's our father and, you know, he looks out for us. He's, he's just good, not some of the time, but all the time. Even when we feel like that, it's, that things are going on in our lives and things we appear not to be good. But if we know God, his goodness and his mercy is going to dwell with us. Amen. Not not only that, Elder Searles, but because God is good, even though we go through the trials mm -hmm. and tribulations of life and we're mistreated, we tend to think that the people that are mistreating us are going to get away with it. But what we have to understand is the true judgment come in the real mm -hmm. life, and that is the afterlife. And because God is good, yes. God cannot abide in evil. So one day for the people that are evil, guess what? It's not going to be able to abide with mm -hmm. God and it will have to be separated from God in the judgment. Amen. We will Amen. have to atone for not being good because God is good. And in order for mm -hmm. us to be with God, we have to be good. Amen. And past that's one of the fruits of the spirits. Amen. His mm -hmm. goodness. You know, that's what that's one of the spirits that he requires us Amen. to have is goodness. That's right. Elder Searles. And, and not to mention if God is truly good, then mm -hmm. evil cannot abide, cannot abide with God's goodness. Amen. 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 And so if you got those evil thoughts, if you got those evil mm -hmm. actions, remember, cannot abide with God's good. Amen. Because God is good, is good, <laughs> good, good. Better than camel soup. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we're going to grace. Amen. Grace. God definitely has the attributes of grace. And I think we're going to lift up at about five or six, six scriptures. Grace. And that will be Psalm 145 and 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, gracious in all his works. Romans chapter 1 verse 5. Through him we have received grace and apostleship, for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Romans 3 and 24. We being justified freely 
by his grace to the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans 5, chapter, verse 15 and 20. But the free gift is not like the offense. For as by one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. Moreover, the law enter that the offense might abide. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Amen. If you want to read the last two, mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter four, verse seven. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measures of Christ's gift. And the last scripture is Hebrews four and sixteen. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain <clears throat> mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. And I see. Sister Miranda is putting those scriptures in for everyone. We want to say thank you um, for putting those scriptures in that they may go back and look at them and read them. What is grace? Grace is the bestowal mm -hmm. of a blessing unearned or unmerited. Yes. When we speak of God's grace, we speak of those wonderful gifts. Uh -huh. For example, salvation. Salvation can't be purchased. You mm -hmm. can't bribe God for it when you get to heaven. Amen. Because God is righteous and God will not be bribed. God no, is no, going to no, judge no. us on our merit, mm -hmm. whether we decided to accept the gift of salvation through his, his grace. grace. Something that we did not earn and something that is unmerited to us, brothers and sisters. But you know what? There are several methods by which mm -hmm. God demonstrates his grace to us. We have what we call common grace. Uh -huh. Common grace is what he gives to everyone. That's mm -hmm. sinners and saved people alike. For instance, good health, blessings, prosper mm -hmm. prosperity, mm -hmm. and life itself is a common grace. Even non-believers have that. But brothers and sisters, we all as men, based on the merits of our lives, being fallen, born in sin mm -hmm. and shaped in iniquity, deserve to die. But God saw fit, saw fit. to give us unmerited favor, and that is grace. By coming into the form of a man, dying on the cross and going back to heaven, there only one thing. There's only one thing in heaven that's made of man, and those are the scars that Jesus will have for all oh. eternity. Amen. He's gonna that beautiful God yes. of ours are gonna keep those scars for all eternity. So that his father can look at him and remember what Amen. he did for us. And every time we see that, can you yes. imagine how we're going to feel Amen. when we see that because of God's grace? But there's also favored grace, right? You have common mm -hmm. grace and then you have that mm -hmm. chosen favored grace. And that's that kind of grace that God is going to give to those who accept him and acknowledge what yes. he did for them. That grace is going to take them to the next level of glory Amen. in Christ Jesus, as Dr. Yes. Sutton will say. Yes, and the good thing about that grace, mm -hmm. um, Pastor, he gives it to us every day. He gives us new grace and new mercy on a daily basis. So, you know, in in, in the words of uh, First Lady Elder Sutton, you know, she says mm -hmm. she think, she always have this thing, you know, I thank God that, you know, he gave me new grace and mercies on this morning, you know, to get right today when I didn't get right yesterday. And that is so true. If God allowed us to wake up in the morning with a finger of love, he gave us another opportunity, more grace and more mercy to get it right and do better. And Rose, uh, Elder Sarah's almost called you Rosemary. Fine. Of course, Rosemary. you're my wife. You are, I'm Rosemary. You are my rose. <laughs> you are my flower, That's baby. perfectly fine. But see... This grace that God gives us is amazing, mm -hmm. and it doesn't rely on anything that we do. It Amen. relies on everything that he does. That he does. I mean, what a gift, the gift of life mm. and life everlasting when we didn't deserve nothing. God is so holy and so righteous. I mean, we can't even be in his presence because, because of his holiness. Amen. And, and uh, because God has come down in the form of a man just so we could be in his presence, now when we accept his salvation, we are redeemed, yes. right? Yes. And brothers and sisters, we are transformed 
by the renewing of the spirit and our minds are renewed. And whenever we go to the other side, Amen. we can be with our father Amen. for all eternity because of his and grace. And I thank God for his grace. God Amen. knows I thank God for his grace. We can forever rejoice in the presence mm -hmm. of the Lord because of salvation, yes. mercy, and grace. Amen. Are you rejoicing on tonight? Amen. 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 What time is it? Holiness. Mm -hmm. Holiness. Exodus chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. Mm -hmm. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of, God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. 1 Samuel 2 and 2. No one is holy like the Lord. Psalm 99 verses 2 through 3. The Lord is great in Zion and he is high above all the people. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. Isaiah 6 and 3. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Revelations 4 and 8. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. It's just something about that word, holy, holy, mm -hmm. holy. We serve our almighty, holy, and righteous God. God is so holy mm -mm 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 -mm. that he is totally Jesus. pure. There's nothing incorrupt or evil mm in God. Nothing. God is totally above all creation yes. and he is eternally incorruptible. He cannot, cannot be corrupted. It is impossible. There's no way it could ever happen. And I don't know about you, but who would not serve a who God, serve a God like that, that is holy and cannot lie, that cannot be, his mind cannot change because he is totally incorruptible. He's not like Adam and Eve. You remember, he made them uh, innocent, but they failed. His holiness is above, their holiness is above the angel's holiness. It is completely set apart uh -huh. from creation. Brothers and sisters, when we fell in the garden, when old, old slew-footed, jealous Satan lied mm -hmm. to our ancestors, and they fell in the garden. It tarnished us yes. for all eternity. But see, in order for God to save us, God came down in the form of an incarnate man mm -hmm. so that we can come back to him and kneel before him yes. and be in his presence Amen. again. Before that, we couldn't be. You know, he, he, after we fall, uh, fall uh, he gave Israel the law, but the law was given so that Jesus would fulfill it and God would bring us back within his presence. Now we can go into God's presence. You remember, he always told them, take your sandals off, you're on holy ground. He told uh -huh. Moses that. Yes. And Moses couldn't see him. Moses could only see his hind parts. He had to put his hand over him in the cleft of a rock because we are so, we are so corruptible that we cannot endure God's purity Amen. and God's holiness. But now we can go before God on our knees and be in his presence and pray to the Lord. And one day when he making us our glorified, whenever we die, we're absent from the body. We immediately go back to the father because of our redemption Amen. and our sanctification. So now we are back in right standings with our holy God. How do you feel about the elder cells? Are you Amen. excited about that? Amen. Yes, I am. Amen. Amen. Where, where we can always and always. forever go to God's throne and kneel and worship him forever and ever because of his grace and mercy. Amen. We can be back within his holiness. Amen. Amen. You want to go on to eminence? Eminence. And I know we got a lot of scriptures that we're reading. Mm -hmm. However, it's, it's to help get a better understanding of God's word. And it's, it's reference scriptures to help get more clarity. Um, eminence. So we're going to Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 23 through 24. 
Am I a God near at hand, says the Lord, and not a God at far off? Acts 7, chapter 17, verses 27 through 28. He is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. The last scripture that we're reading on eminence is Haggai, chapter 2, verse 5. According to the word that I am covenant with you, when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. Eminence. Eminence is forever mm -hmm. present. Think about that for a moment. When they say God is eminent, uh -huh. that means a lot of things. Mm -hmm. That means no matter what you're going through, no matter what trials and tribulations you mm -hmm. face, no matter where you are, God is omnipresent. Yes. Yes. God is imminent. We know God is omnipresent. Omnipresent means that God is everywhere. everywhere. You can't escape God. Everywhere. But imminent means that God is right here, right in the midst of mm -hmm. your circumstances. Even though God created everything, that doesn't mean he's somewhere sleeping just like mm -hmm. when they were on Mount Carmel right. and, and, and the prophets of, um, of Baal were trying to call Baal down and, 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 and my brother looked at him and said, are they, is he sleeping? Is he using the bathroom? <laughs> no, God is paying attention to us. Whenever yes. we cry out to the Lord, he comes to our rescue. Mm -hmm. So even though God created it, God is standing right there mm -hmm. waiting for our beck and call. He is a present help in our time, time of, need. of need. And he is not sitting somewhere idle. He is pr participating in his creation. And guess what, brothers and sisters, we can take light in knowing that God is always there Amen. to protect us because he is near. He is imminent. He cares about us Amen. and he cares about our every need. Amen. And him being everywhere and seeing everything that we do mm -hmm. and seeing everything that we say, you know, a lot of times we, we, we try to fool man, Amen. you know, but God is everywhere. He sees and knows everything. Amen. He does. What's the next one? Immutable. Immutable. So, 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 so we've covered so far. Mm -hmm. We've covered um, e eternal goodness, grace, mm -hmm. holiness, and eminence. Those, uh, all of those things. That means yes. he's always been here. Mm -hmm. So he knows everything. He knows the things beginning yes. before his end. So you can serve him. You need to let him make that masterpiece. Let him guide and lead your Amen. life because he knows the destination he's created for you. If you follow God's mm -hmm. destiny for your life, you're going to arrive on right. time, in style, Amen. correct, Amen. on point. And then God is so good that he's not going to leave you the way he found you. He's always going to make yes. you better than what you were. And you then work. with his grace, he's giving you something that you don't deserve anyway. He's giving you something that you mm -hmm. can never repay him for. He's giving it to you because he loves you and he wants you to magnify him and lift him up and exhort his name for his glory because he is holy, yes. which means he is set holy, apart. Holy, he is above holy. all of his creations and we need to magnify him and lift up his name because he's imminent. He has never left us. He has never forsaken us. He is always there abiding Amen. with us in our time of need and in our time of trouble. And those are the First five things that we cover about God, and there's so much more. Amen. We're probably going to have to do a part two. Amen. Still talking about the attributes of the almighty God that we serve. And now we're going to talk about his immutability. immutability. That means he does not mm -hmm. change. He is the same yesterday, today, Day and tomorrow. Everyone. You can hang your head on it. If he told you he was going to do it, he's not going to change his Amen. mind like some of these people <laughs> that tell you they're going to do change stuff for you wind. and they don't do it. If God told you he's going to do it, guess what? He is going to do it. He's going to do it. He's not going to do make it. us no promise that he will not fulfill. Amen. I know Peter, um, <laughs> <laughs> Peter said that you know, mean is slack concerning their promises. Amen. But God is not slack concerning his promises. If he said, you might as well bank on it. You can bank on it all day Amen. long. Amen. So we're going to lift up two scriptures for immutability. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. For I am the Lord, I do not change. James 1 and 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. 
and come down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Amen. That's it? Mm -hmm. That was the first, that was just two scriptures for that one. So in God's immutability mm -hmm. lies a great source of comfort for the believer. Mm -hmm. Why? The fact that God does not change his mind. If he right. said it, he's going to do it. Amen. That's his character. That's just God's character. God cannot change. He's trustworthy. Can you imagine he's... somebody who has lived forever mm -hmm. and has never changed his never mind? Changed. Has never, if everything has been consistent, so mm -hmm. we can take the reliability and knowing that we can count on him. Mm -hmm. We can trust him. We can lean and depend on right. him. If he said it, he's going, he's going to, to, do, to it. do it. His quality of character gives us the mm -hmm. security as a believer to believe that God, if he saved one person, he will save another person. God does not have a respecter of persons. And God cannot change his mind. Mm -hmm. God cannot have a slip of the tongue. God is always going to do what he said Amen. he is going to do, brothers and sisters. That's the goodness of God. You cannot Amen. beat God's immutability. It, it's kind of hard to say that word today. Immutability. immutability. He's immutable. Immutable. And that's the good thing about it. He won't change his prophecies. No, he he won't not. change his justice. He won't change his dependability. He will not vary from his word. He stays on point. If you pray to the Lord and he answered your prayer, he's not going to rescind it. It is yours for all eternity, Amen. even though you don't deserve it. He's going to give it to you anyway. Amen. Well said. Amen. Yes. That's just, that's just, this is the kind of God that we serve. I get excited talking about him. I mean, just, I mean, and, 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 and the thing mm. about it is he just give us a dose mm -hmm. of, of his character. Yes. Yes. But, but see, not only, not only do we serve a mighty and awesome mm -hmm. God, but we know God has to exist mm -hmm. Because of all the moral laws, he sets the standard for our justice system. Look, look, when, when you go back and you look at the Old Testament, because mm -hmm. the next thing we're going to talk about is God's justice. Mm -hmm. When you go back and you look at all the morals that God gave us yes. in the law, and, and when you look at the justice that God gave us in the law, it's how our justice systems are today uh -huh. from God's commandments from and his God's commandments. laws. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Because God is the moral construct to everything. Everything comes from him. Amen. Especially everything. justice. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you this right here before we give you the scriptures on justice. You might get away with it on this side. But remember, he is eminent and he's omnipresent, mm -hmm. which means he sees everything. He sees everything. He knows everything. You cannot get anything by him. Mm -hmm. You need to get it together now and realize that he's looking at you. Your guardian angel is looking at you. Mm -hmm. Satan and his demons are looking at I'm you and those fallen angels. And all of them, mm -hmm. those, those fallen angels are waiting for you to open your mouth so they can speak a curse mm -hmm. while the angels are waiting for you to open your mouth and be led by the spirit, by the spirit. to speak a blessing because words are Amen. spirits. And there's power in the tongue. In the tongue. Power in the tongue. Mm -hmm. Speak life or death. But because of God's mm -hmm. justice, we can speak life. Amen. 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 We're going to lift up two more um, of the attributes of um, God on tonight. And then we'll be doing part two on next week. And uh, Let's just do one more. One more yeah. justice. Mm -hmm. Okay, one more justice. Um, those scriptures will be lifting up Genesis chapter 18, verse 25. Far be it from you to do such a thing as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked so that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far be it from you, shall not the judge of all the earth do right. Exodus 34, chapter 34, verses 6 through 7. The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, gracious, long-suffering, abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means cleaning the guilty, 
visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. Nehemiah chapter 9, verses 32 through 33. However, you are just in all that has befallen us. Romans chapter 9, verses 14. Verse 14. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Some also loves justice. See, you have ex executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Romans 1 and 32. Who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Last scripture for justice. First Peter, Peter verse chapter one, verse 17. The father without partiality judges according to each one's work. Conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear. And those are the scriptures, yes, sir, for justice. Who is the father of justice? God, God. right? God is the ultimate judge mm -hmm. over the lives and actions of men. Brothers and sisters, what we have to understand is this. Mm -hmm. This world that we live in is a corrupt world. Men lie, they steal, mm -hmm. they cheat, yes. they commit fornication, they're whoremongers. They're going to, it seems like there are no uh, re repercussions from the things that they mm -hmm. do. But guess what? There is a just God yes. who is eminent and omnipresent and he sees all the wrong that's going on in the world. That evil boss man that cheated you for all of this time, he's going to get the judgment that he deserves or the justice that he deserves. That evil politician just like what's going on now with these evil politicians that don't care about what's going on in society with COVID-19 and people trying to survive, don't know how they're going to buy the mm -hmm. next meal, probably won't have a decent Christmas, don't have a job. They're going to get uh -huh. justice because we're not judged on this side. We're judged on this side by man's law, yes. but we're judged on the eternal side by God's law. Mm -hmm. And we as Christians can take heart in knowing that we are going to get yes. justice for the ones that are deceitful in heart mm -hmm. and do not and are injustice in yes. to them. But we should take heart in knowing that because mm -hmm. of Jesus and the justice that he doled mm -hmm. out on the cross for us. That when God look at us, even though we're not going to be, yes. uh, we're going to be injustice or unjustified, but through God looking at Christ mm -hmm. and Christ dying on the cross, he's going to look at us and we're going to receive justice through Jesus Christ. Yes. But for the ones who do not accept him, they're going to receive their just reward because that um, destruction and that sentence that was supposed to be passed on them, they're going to receive it because they didn't accept God's gift of salvation through the death and the atonement of the blood of Jesus Christ. You remember, God stepped out of glory in the form of a man, died, and he has gone back to heaven with those scars that he will have for all eternity. Mm -hmm. And when you get to heaven... And you see those scars, mm -hmm. and he says, this I did for you, but you didn't accept. Mm -hmm. Here is the justice that I'm doling out on you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Enter into hell that was created for Satan and mm -hmm. his fallen angels. That is what's going to happen because God is a God of justice. He is a God mm -hmm. of righteousness. He's a God of holiness, yes. and he will enact his righteousness, holiness, and justice. That's all we have for him tonight, Amen. right? That's where you told me to stop it. That's where I told you to stop it. So tonight we went through, yeah, tonight we went through his eternality, his goodness, his grace, his holiness, his eminence, mm -hmm. his immutability and his justice. Yes. All of those things are just some of the attributes 
of our almighty God. Let us go into prayer. God, we thank you. We magnify you. We bless your name for you're holy and you are to be set apart yes. from your creation. You are to be glorified and magnified. We say hallelujah in the name of the Father. Hallelujah in the name of the yes. Son. Hallelujah in the name of the precious Holy Spirit, God, we thank you for your thank goodness. You, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. For God, you gave us something that we didn't deserve and you gave us something that we that that um, that we should have received. You took that away from us because of your mercy. God, we thank you for your eminence because whenever we need you, you are close, you are there, yes. and you hear our ever beckoning call. And God, we thank you right now because you are immutable. You cannot lie. When you promise us something, yes, you will fulfill it. And God, we thank you for just being good because you've been better to us than we could ever imagine being to ourselves. Whenever you created us, you knew that we will fall. But God, you came into a sinful world, the world that was an abomination to you to save our wretched souls. And we magnify you and lift your name up for that. We thank you for the thank Bible study on tonight. We thank you for revealing yourself unto us. We ask that you let us understand your nature and that we take on the attributes and the character of who you are. Yes, we God. thank you on tonight. We thank you for the word. Let us remember what we've learned yes, and let us be doers and be active in the faith. Yes, Asking God. this prayer in the name of the blessed Father, Son, and blessed Holy Spirit. And in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Once again, Pastor Searles and my beautiful wife, Eldridge Rosemary Searles, coming from Coates Chapel Free Will Baptist yes. Church. We hope you have enjoyed the Bible study on tonight. We ask that you be blessed and may heaven smile upon you. Amen. Have a blessed evening. We'll continue lifting you up in prayer and you do the same for us. Have a blessed evening. Good night. Good night. <laughs>